border da Croatia or that tattoo show. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, welcome to that <laughs> tattoo show for another week. What's that mean? <laughs> There's me being uh, mildly racist and ignoring Chris's Welsh. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what the Anglo Saxons do, don't they? Don't blame me, blame the parents. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, welcome to another episode of That Tattoo Show. I hope you're all well. What are we talking about today, Paul? This week we're talking about needles, needle gauges, needle types, everything, the whole lot. By the end of this video, we hope that you will know everything you need to know about needles. Or just enough to get by. Well, this is probably what you already know. All that and more yeah, is coming I, I, up. I, I, Shut up! All that and more is coming up on the other side of the intro. <laughs> See you there. Before I was rudely interrupting Paul there, uh, what I was going to say is I think this episode is more directed or aimed at the apprentice or the beginner tattoo artist, someone at the beginning of their career. So not the wise old sage Gandalf tattooist like me. Yes, the, the old wise Gandalf sage that has been tattooing for less than that, less time than, he, than me. <laughs> Let me just explain to you, Chris has got the ump because of my grey beard. People are, are contacting us and going, Paul really knows what he's talking about when it comes to tattooing. And Chris has actually been tattooing longer than me. And he's like, why do they all think you're so wise and clever? It's the beard. It's the white beard. I'm instantly the wise old sage, you know? Exactly. Chris. Yes, my friend. I've been looking on my needle boxes. Some of them say eight, some of them say 10, some of them say 12, some of them say 14. What does that mean, Chris? What does it mean? Basically, eight, 10, 12, and 14, the gauges is the size of the diameter. So if you've got an eight gauge needle- But I haven't got a 10, Chris. I haven't got a 10. I've got a 35, 40, 25. Are they different needles, Chris? Shush, I'm getting to that now. Pleb. Right. <laughs> I've always known it as like a 12 gauge, a 10 gauge and an 8 gauge. Before I was rudely interrupted by uh, Gandalf. <laughs> a 12 gauge needle is a 0.35. A 10 gauge needle is a 0 0.30. And an 8 gauge needle is a 0.25. Do you know why there are two different measurements? Because uh, I do if you want me to tell you. I do actually know the answer to this. Go on. The reason there are two different measurements in America, they measure needle gauges differently from the UK. Ah. Uh. 8, 10, 12 and 14 is the American expression of the measurement and the millimetre diameter expression is the European or UK expression of the measurement. Why do people have to complicate it? Like? It's like imperial and metric, basically. Even there, right, we're saying now you've got 8 gauge or 0 0.25 millimetre needle, right? You've also got standards, bug pins, double zeros, a 12 gauge and a 0 0.35 millimetre uh, diameter needle is a standard. That's what we would class as a standard needle. A double zero is a 10 gauge or a 0 0.30 millimetre. And then a bug pin is a 0 0.25 millimetre, I do believe. This is where you get into confusion. Why do we use the term bug pin? The term bug pin comes from entomology, which is the study of insects. Oh, fucking hell, he's done his research, haven't he? Back when I started tattooing in the 1800s, tattooists couldn't buy their supplies from regular tattoo supplies because it wasn't such a thing as a tattoo supplier. So if they got needles, they used to have to get them from various sources. Some of the needles that tattooists would buy came from the world of entomology. You literally pin the bug onto a board and then study it through a microscope. Ultimately, there are four gauges of needles that you need to worry about from thick to thin. 14, 12, 10, 8. We talked about needle gauges. What about needle taper? What difference does that make? Short and medium taper needles, the holes look bigger. Uh, and uh, the long taper needles, the holes look smaller. So it's so basically, we... I'm, I'm just going to not let you talk a second. Say, for example, for me, I, I would say like when I was using medium taper needles, I couldn't get like, I couldn't, I couldn't get smooth black and grey. But then one of my colleagues was using the long taper needles and he was like getting solid black, getting nice fucking smooth black and grey. Not as smooth as with a bug pin, but smooth enough. It looked fucking good. And so for me, I think a, a, a long taper needle is like the hovis best of both other breads are available. 
So the taper, in case you're wondering what it is, is actually the length of dis in distance from the very, very tip of the needle to where the needle becomes its, at its widest point. So with a long taper, you have to put the needle in further to get the full thickness of the needle. With a shorter taper, you put the needle in very little before you're into the full thickness of the needle. So for something like shading, if you're not putting the, like the, the needles fully in to get the full depth of the needle, you're actually putting in smaller holes. So as you draw the, the machine out and you flick it across the, across the skin, you're putting in smaller holes that are finer. I personally prefer medium type of needles, you know, standard. I've got a couple of mags that I'll pull out every now and again, you know, like a 17 bug pin, which is my smudging tool that I, I like to refer to it as. When it comes to like the tapers of the needle though, like obviously every tool, you know, every job has a tool that is good for it. And I, I, I think like, if you are somebody that it doesn't want to spend lots of money on different types of needles, then I would say an all-rounder needle for me is a, a, a long taper needle. Gets the job done. But if you if you are somebody if you like wants to kind of only do a certain style of tattooing, like black work, traditional, then just fucking stick with medium taper needles. You'll just pack our colour in efficiently as well. And, and that's that's one thing I, I have noticed like the medium taper and the shorter taper needles, they, they pack it in a lot more efficiently than bug pin. Cause like you do notice like, and this goes back to another video, which we've literally just filmed now where, when I, and I said, you know, you go to conventions and you see some art artists, they do tattoos and the tattoos look fucking slamming, but all the color falls out. That's because they may have spent like 10 hours doing something with bug pin needles when they could have smashed it out with a fucking, a medium tape of needle yep. and caused less trauma, you know, yep. fucking wasted less ink and it would have took half the time like. The name of the game with this is to be as efficient as possible, spend the minimum amount of time in the skin getting the desired result. So if you're looking to, to put in a field of solid colour, use a medium tape of needle. If you're looking to do a lot of blends between colours, then you might want to look at long tape of needles. If you're looking to do a lot of soft subtle blends and lots of movements then you might even you might want to bring the gauge of the needle down so that you, the holes are finer you know really you know this is one of the biggest choices for the actual tattoo itself what type of needle do i need of the four choices that i've got in terms of gauge and then the couple of choices couple of three choices that i've got in terms of taper and experiment a little if you can you know buy maybe a, a box of both and see which one works better for you your technique and your style some companies they stay sell sample boxes as well so that's your taper of your needle. Do you have curved mags or do you have standard flat mags? When we say curved mag, what we mean is the needles are basically like your fingers. So the, you know, the middle of the mag is forward, but the edges, the needles at the edges curve away. So Chris is showing you at the moment. So as you're doing this, this kind of round and round motion, you're not digging and catching the edge. If you're new to tattooing or you're a little bit less experienced, one of the dangers is you can be heavy on the left-hand side or the right-hand side. And this can just be left-handers versus right-handers and your hand position and stuff. So there is a danger that you can catch the corner of the mag and cut the clients and stuff. So curved mags do help with that. Personally, I think once your technique is good and solid, I would always recommend straight mags. So I will slightly disagree there. I feel like I can use any needle. The only time I struggle, right, is when I use larger mags and I think uh, curved mags when they're up to the 25s and or 27s or whatever, the, the larger end of the, the scale, I, I feel like it's better to use a curved mag. Just only a slight curve. So the next... Helps, helps go on, penetrate go on, the now carry on, go on. Like, but, um, go on, now carry on. But no, I just think like... Oh, oh, fucking button in. Fucking in. What do you use? Straights, always. Except for the 27 which is curved because I fucking hate curved mags. I mean, different I am. I'll, I'll use curve mags, I'll use fucking flat mags. If you use straight mags, the corner of any mag is a three liner. It doesn't matter how big it is, you put the mag on its side and use the corner of the mag. Any mag, 20, 27 straight, is a, if you use the corner of it, it's a three liner. And so I've got used to cutting edges into shapes and stuff. I will use the edge of the mag to put straight lines on things and stuff. I like to use mags on the sides to make brush effects and stuff. I find a curve mag, it's just not as efficient when you're using it in what is quite possibly the wrong way, but it's, that's how I get the job done and I don't worry about, you know, that sort of stuff. 
needles come in textured and smooth. Now, I, I'll be very honest with you, right? Um, I've never delved into the whole textured needle aspect of things, so I, I, I'm not going to fucking clue what, what the difference between a textured needle and a, and, and a non-textured needle. Like, I could imagine that maybe a textured needle holds more ink. That, that would appear to be the, the thing. Quite honestly, I've used both. And I, if you gave me both as a blind test, I'd struggle to tell you which one was which. I personally don't notice a huge difference between the two needles. I just think like, the, the idea of a textured needle just sounds like it could cause more, tra more trauma to the skin than it's worth, like, do you know what I mean? I, I would imagine that the texture's microscopic. Oh, no, no, I know it's microscopic. It's, it's just that when you hear the, the wording of it, textured, it's like... Oh, but do I really want to put something textured in or do I want to put something in fucking it's nice and smooth that's going to be poof poof in and out like yeah smooth and clean smooth and clean yeah not rough and fucking yeah. textured so um <laughs> there you go we talked a bit about the, the configurations of mags do we want to talk about the configuration of rounds tight rounds and loose rounds you got tight liners loose liners, round shaders, like I've been using uh, like these traditional needles. Are the traditional needles, aren't they hollow in the middle? They've got no needle down the centre. No, they are just the hollow needles. They, they're a different one again altogether. When you make a liner or when you make a round needle, so you take, I don't know, four, because I've got four fingers, right? You take these four needles, you put them all together like that. If you left them like that, so if you just put them together like that and soldered them up, you would end up with what we call a, a round shader or a loose round, which means it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not tightened up. If you wanted to turn that into a liner, you would have to pull them into a point to make the thickness of the needle. Now, how tight you can pull them in can sometimes depend on the taper. So if you use a double long taper needle, and you, and you pull them all into a point, you will have I really a, a much finer needle at the, at the front. That's great if you're doing very, very fine work. Yeah, I don't see the point in them, if I'm honest with you. If you've got a needle that's configured like this, right, the ink can go in here really easy where my pen is, right? So it goes in there, it sits inside the needle, you suck it up out of the ink pot, and away you go. The tighter those needles come together, the ink can't get between the needles, it sits yeah. outside the needles. So it can be, re with a really, really tight liner, it can be really difficult to line. A lot of traditional artists will loosen their liners or will use round shaders. They get the old lighter trick on yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, that was like one of the first tricks I got told, I was like... <laughs> so you basically, like Chris, you hold that up to the camera and I'll explain. At the end of all those needles, there's a great big blob of solder. Now, if you imagine that with a round needle so like a liner or a shader if you put a lighter underneath that and warm it up the needles will actually spread out a little bit which creates a void between the needles which allows more ink to go inside and you can pull slightly better lines with it another way of doing it if you don't smoke and you haven't got a lighter is to push your needle through your clip cord bag which will open up your a needle slightly. I don't recommend pushing it through a paper towel because they can pick up a bit of lint and uh, and that's not good to put into your client. But you can definitely push them through your clipcord bag and it will open them up a little bit. But that's the whole point of that void in the middle. And so that's where the hollow needle comes in. Do you know something really? Well, <laughs> cause I, I've been fucking filming the needle. Throw a little absolutely minging fucking story, right? Minging, if you don't know what minging is, it just, it's just, means disgusting. When I first started my tattoo in Korea, I'm not gonna say who said for me to do this, but I instantly thought, you are fucking disgusting. I was told if I wanted to spread the needles out, I should push them through my denim jeans by my ankle. It's not a good idea. That's fucking disgusting. You'll see liner, tight liner, round shader, and then you'll see hollow. I wouldn't mind trying them. What, what are they like? Have you tried them? I love them. They're, like tradi they're more like a traditional lining needle. If you're still a little bit confused, when would you choose which of the needle types? So uh, let's start with the 12 gauge needle. Solid black, traditional, blackout, tribal, Maori, Polynesian, you know, anything that you need to pack in something solid and really efficiently. When would you use a 10 gauge needle? A double zero needle. You can use it with color blending, so possibly if you're doing new school stuff. Uh, you can do traditional with it. It does slow you down a little bit. So I think it's more if you want to 
have a little bit more control with your color blending and spend a little bit more time and get a little bit smoother black and gray. So you're not gonna be as efficient packing the color in. You can pack the color in with it, but you're not gonna be as efficient as you are with a 12 gauge needle. Um, so yeah, it's just to get that, that little bit softer shading. Softer shading. When would you use an eight gauge needle? You wouldn't. <laughs> the bug pin, you wouldn't. <laughs> nah, uh, the bug pin needles, black and gray. If you're doing like really small detail stuff, uh, if you want complete control over your shading, uh, again, like people use, you can use it for color realism, but I would use bug pins alongside like a 12 gauge with when it comes to color realism. So I, I genuinely feel like a lot of the stuff you can do in color realism, you can do with a fucking long taper 12 gauge needle. And then it's like the small itty bitty bitty bits you do with a fucking bug pen. Do you know, I've never in my life used an eight gauge needle. I ain't fucking with them, they just look way too small. So um, the other one that I've never used, because I've only ever used 12s and 10s, because that was always enough for me, uh, and it's the one that I didn't know anything about until the other day, is the, the 14 gauge. Yeah, I never knew that until I looked on the fucking website, too, you? Same website as you, probably. I was like that thing in The Hobbit where he goes, it comes in pints. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? They've got, they've got really big fat needles now. I'm gonna need to get some of them. So quite honestly, I don't know. Anything that's bigger, bolder, and uh, I mean, I think that would be amazing for doing solid black. I think, I think just doing solid black work, it's gotta be cool. Yeah. I'd really like to have a look at them. I'm, I'm really interested in, in them for big fields of color. I think that'd be amazing. Big fields of solid flat color. Might be amazing for something else. Stabbing people with them. Three liner in a 0 0.40 would be great for stippling, wouldn't it? That'd be really good for like a very slow running machine where you just want to get fields of dots because you'd be able to see those dots really well. Ooh, so yeah. I'm going to definitely experiment with uh, the 0.40s. I'm going to have to find out. If you make needles, if you make them, send me a box of needles, will you? You should now be able to make informed decisions about your needles. And if you can't, um, message Chris because he knows more about it than I do. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> And that's it for this week's episode of That Tattoo Show. Don't forget, click that one, click that one, click that one, and tell all your friends. We'll be here every week with tattoo news, views, tips, and opinions. I've been Paul. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been Chris. We'll see you next week. Take care. Well, hang on, one more thing. If you want to win, or not win, it's not a competition, this is a giveaway. If you want to get your hands on a free Solo for Unlimited, because I fucking don't like it. I'm giving it away. All you got to do is hit like, hit subscribe, and fucking not like. Hit notification buttons. Hit subscribe. Follow us on Instagram at that tattoo show. And if we get a thousand subscribers on January the thirty first, we're gonna give it away to one of you lucky motherfuckers. And I've got to say one more thing. You have to be a professional tattoo artist or apprentice in a registered tattoo studio. We will only be sending this machine to a tattoo studio. So, sorry, I'm not sending it to like, some guy called Steve in his house. Take care, guys. We'll see you next week. Yeah.